what can we learn from an antagonist? That's the question we're going to be addressing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Flourishment is sponsored by Access More. So for today's episode, I had the privilege of interviewing one of the actors from the TV streaming series, The Chosen. His name is Brandon Potter. He is a tremendously accomplished actor and voice actor and has been in the industry for many years. And he has recently appeared on the worldwide phenomenon, The Chosen, as Quintus, who is the antagonist in this series. He plays a Roman official, a higher level soldier, and it's a fictional character. But as the antagonist, we're going to dive in to what that perspective can do for us how we can relate to that in ways we might not even expect. It was an incredible interview. I look forward to sharing this with you. So make sure you listen all the way through. Well, welcome to Flourishment. I'm delighted to have you on the show. And I'm really curious to hear how you feel about playing the antagonist <laughs> and the chosen. I really want to dive into that because I think that's an interesting angle that most people don't think about. All right. Uh, Tina, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here. Well, what do you want to know about playing the bad guy? What, uh, what, what, what's interesting to you? I relate to that. I don't think people want to admit that we can relate to being the antagonist to Jesus. But I think we do sure. more than we want yeah. to think we do. Yeah. So, you know, from, a, from an actor's standpoint, playing a bad guy, uh, you can never, you, you can't really judge your character. So you sort of have to empathize with them, you know, and, and that gets a little bit easier if you sort of change how you look at thought process. Bad guy like this doesn't wake up and be a bad guy, you know. Exactly. I tore my mustache and, and tied to go to the railroad track. It's not, it's not <laughs> right. what he's thinking. He's thinking I'm going to bring order to people's lives. I'm going to uh, solidify the empire that he believes in. Uh, secure Caesar's legacy. All this stuff. He thinks he's doing good stuff. So I kind of always start there to sort of empathize with the character and picking goals and objectives, right? And I pursue them as earnestly as I can in the scene. And if the scene is written well, I can pursue those goals like a real life human and the writing will take care of me being that. You know? I think in terms of audience engagement and people relating to put just the character, you know, watching it home. One of the things I thought about, especially as as, as the show is taking off, we're shooting our fourth season right now, mm-hmm. and we've had some, some really strong reactions all over the world. But it, you know, it didn't really start that way. It started as we were shooting like reviews and texts and that kind of stuff, and sort of rounds and stuff. To this sort of mind boggling reach that the show makes. One of the things I thought about was that. I, Brandon, am playing a small part in something that I don't fully understand. I can't grasp the scope of all of this. Quintus is also playing a part in something that he doesn't fully understand. And I think that's something that everyone can sort of take away. That maybe you're waking up and you're thinking you're doing the right thing every day, but it's worth examining your real motives, your real motivations. You're a part of the story that's too big for you to fully understand. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. That you can sort of find a way to relate that way. It's an important example. I have a favorite line from Quintus. What is it? It is, what am I going to do with you, Jesus? (laughs) Are you flesh or are you bones? Do I need to spit you out? How are you going to help me? And I think oftentimes, even as believers, we make the mistake of wondering, what am I going to do with you, Jesus? How can you be, what's in it for me? And oftentimes, whether we know it or not, that's kind of the angle that we take when we're in relationship with Jesus. How do you feel about that as someone who played that role and said (laughs) those words? I think that I I can honestly say that there have been times in my life where I was very self-serving, you know, and that I I, I suspect that most of all, those times in my life. 
And there's something about selfishness that it's like it feels just I deserve this. I'm just not sure how useful that is you know, to be part of something bigger and to give yourself honestly to your endeavors is always better. And it somehow almost always feels like the second choice. You know what I mean? And to make that the first choice, if anyone does that in any aspect of their life, I think that's a, that's a benefit. You know? So what did you learn most by playing Quintus' part? A lot of stuff. So relating to him, you know, as a person, kind of the stuff we talked about just a second ago about accepting that you don't really fully understand your role in something bigger, and that's okay, you know? So there's that. But like on a, on a private level, like on a, just going to work every day with these incredible actors, I get to sort of saunter on set, you know, three days a season and, and be witty and pithy and clever and sarcastic and mean. But I get to see these other incredible actors do beautiful, detailed, nuanced, emotional work. And seeing that up close and personal with such a big cast, massively talented cast, I, I recently in my kind of professional life gained a new appreciation of how different you get to that really, really emotional place. It's been a constant revelation of each set now, I'm watching everyone do their thing, and I, I'm finding myself inspired and influenced by them. Does playing a role change you? I know that you have to play the role, you have to really empathize with that character, but do you find that sometimes in that process, you experience character change? Can you talk about that a little bit in this yeah. role and in, in the work that you're doing with The Chosen, which is a tremendous project? Um, and like the sort of bigger kind of global view. I get to go to work every day with a big, big, big group of people, not just the cast, but like the crew and the production. The production machine that chosen is giant, right? And there are all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds, and everyone is rallying behind this one cause, right? To tell this beautiful story of you, very, very best of supersedes all differences that they have. And the, the audience that watches this show, they're all over the world. They have all kinds of different views about themselves, their life, uh, their lives, uh, spirituality, all of that. They can still rally around this story and find beauty and meaning. That has been extraordinarily meaningful to me, to see people come together at every level of this project. It's been my sort of motivating factor as a person and as an artist to bring people together. And I can't imagine that more. Amazing vehicles to do that. So that's kind of the bigger, or the biggest thing that I've learned or taken away or, or been changed by is seeing a lot of different people come together. I think, like, you know, society now is really siloed and sort of polarized, and people like to stick to their little bubbles. And this has been a great opportunity for me not to stick to mine, for the people that are working on the show not to stick to it. The people watching the show not to stick to theirs either. No, to share this with other folks. It's the opposite of the takeaway that you would get when you're thinking about the selfishness message. Exactly. If you know yeah, that yeah, you, exactly. need to be, you need to be in relationship with others to be your best you. Yes, absolutely. And if you're not serving and really growing together and getting stronger and who you're meant to be together, then you become selfish. That's right. That is exactly right. That's a really, yeah. really smart way to put that. Yeah, it's very interesting to note that because Quintus, that character, is Roman, he does not have a faith set other than the, the gods that the Romans would have worshipped. He's really got all, only got himself. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, him as a person, you know, I think he worked hard to get to, to where he was. He, you know, we were talking earlier about selfishness and his masquerades. It's like, just, I deserve this, right? 
for self-protection. Right. I need to yes. do this, really. That's probably a big part of it. And I think that was like a big part of his survival coming up. Yeah. Like he didn't inherit this position. He didn't get it through nepotism. Quintus, the, the root word Quint, five, right? Yeah. That, that's what you might name your fifth son. Can you imagine? Oh, number five. I don't even want to get it. Exactly. Your number exactly. five. Yeah. So he had to claw his way to this position. Mm-hmm. and That's his identity. He doesn't have a name. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really insightful. Um, yeah, so I think he was driven by that, that selfishness, that, that, that protection. And to say that I don't relate to that would be not true. Right? How many of us put our identity in all the wrong things? Exactly. We're all at risk of that. We're all at risk of being the antagonist and putting our identity in the wrong things and siloing, as you so grow this. All right. <laughs> you know, and, and being closed off from other people and the growth that we experience. So giving up yourself to be part of something bigger, is that what you really feel is the biggest takeaway from what you're doing? I think so. Yeah. Um, and, and seeing that that, that that people coming together, that antidote to siloing, it, it's, it's real. It's out there. If you put yourself into something, you can achieve that. But you have to put yourself into it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So what is your biggest message that you think you hope people take away from the chosen project? It might still have something to do with... with gathering together with people that are different. I, I think that there's something to that. Or maybe that's like where my head is and that's all I'm thinking of now. But I think it, it, the urge to share something new, to be a part of it openly and honestly. Um, that light and that love. Oh man, yeah, now that question's got me thinking about all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, well, that... The word chosen is about identity. <laughs> right, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. And so it is the opposite of having no identity. It's the opposite of your character, who is a nobody. He's a five. He has to make an identity happen. He has to protect himself. Yeah. So the message of the chosen is truly antagonistic to the character. You're showing up the light Yep. By bringing that dark piece. Yep, that's exactly right. Without you, they would be. Able Wait to a minute, do you need to play Quintus? I think you know this better than me. <laughs> I don't we'll think I'm as qualified as you. Yeah, it'll be an interesting look for me, I think. So, yeah, well, this has been really interesting. Are there any last things that you'd like to tell the audience about the shows and about what you hope that they learn by watching these characters really authenticate what life would have been like from someone like Jesus? The stuff that I can say to anyone who enjoys the show, who watches the show, I, I think that The Chosen speaks for itself, right? To, to move towards the light, that suffering and pain, that, that is a, that's a part of it all. It's okay, but there is hope. It's fun. And coming into that experience of Jesus with expectations or with needs and wants that you expect Jesus to fill for you, what does that do for us? Just like Quintus responding to right. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I going to do with you? Sure. Am I going to have to kill you, Jesus? Right. You know? Not exactly a quid pro quo here. Yeah, no, exactly. That's not what's happening. But we do that too. Am I going to have to knock you off of my scent? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, exactly yeah. right. What do you think about that? You know, the only way to get anything is to open yourself up to possibilities instead of a quid pro quo that just giving, not expecting anything. I think it has to be that. Um, I've been sort of moving forward in my life with that a lot these days, and I find myself happier and more fulfilled small things. We'll say, hey, what's after this? What's after season seven? And at this point in my life, I can honestly say, I, I don't know, and that's okay. If I never did another job again, I would feel very satisfied with what I got to do for you. You know, if I did get another job, which is me, this is unlikely what even happen, then I would pursue it with that sort of open heartedness that I learned. 
just having this experience and growing out of the need to have an expectation for what God is going to do for you and just letting him do what he's going to do, does that mean that the next job is going to be inherently difficult because he's with you? I, I don't know. That's a really good question. I don't know that I have uh, the answer for that. I mean, you know, it, it might... I would like to think that I'm in an open enough place right now that that I could find me satisfaction. Do you know what I'm saying? Instead of making the, uh, we were talking about earlier with the, the sort of predetermined qualifications, however, I'm, I'm going to make a list of demands. Like, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I will either find meaning in it or the, the meaning to find me. You, you understand? Yeah, I, I think one of the one of those two things will happen. I, I don't think that I'm going to make that that list of demands. Yeah. I think I'm kind of surrendering, letting control go, letting that all go, so then you can be blessed by what happens. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's exciting. Yeah, it is. So, so tell the audience what they need to expect next from you. Are oh you going to just continue to only work on the chosen, or do you have other things going on? Some of the stuff going on, like I, I've always done a lot of like voiceover and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, and I do some sort of I do some fun commercial work when I think it's going to be fun, uh, like funny stuff. I have got a feature that I shoot at the end of June or July. Anyway, later on this summer, I'll really be doing some of that stuff. But 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 right now, if this is the only thing I'm doing, I'm okay with yeah. that. You know, I don't just mean shooting. I mean like coming and hanging out with folks, and talking about the show. Like, that, that's part of this, and I, I'm really enjoying a lot of that. Like, the stuff that we talked about, I feel like you gave me a lot of food for thought. Yeah, um, that's what we do in the body of Christ. Yeah, we right on. We grow each other, right? Yeah, that's yeah, what we've yeah, been talking yeah, yeah. about today. Yeah. So if you had a message to give listeners that you would hope that your work is helping inspire them, what would you say that message would be? When you're sitting around and talking about the chosen people that think like you or think different than you. You're doing the thing. Keep doing it. Come together. Okay. Open up those discussions. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Of course. You really yeah, appreciate your me. time and being willing to talk with me. Yeah. Yeah. I had a blast. Thank yeah. you so much. So how can people stay in touch with you and follow your career? Oh, um, you can always look me up on Instagram. It's Brandon Potter Official. Uh, that's sort of the only social media that I have right now. Okay. I'm not like a guru at it or anything, but I, I do a little bit every now and then. Okay. Flourishment is part of the Spark Media Network and can be found on the Edify app.